Hi guys, welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP can be used as an alternative to VLOOKUP. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more about VLOOKUP, I'll link my previous videos in the description below. However, as a quick reminder, if we want to look up a name in this table and return, say, the value for January, how would we do this formula? So I'm just going to pop a name in here. We're going to go VLOOKUP. We're going to select our lookup value, which is our name. I'm just going to make that absolute. Then we're going to select our table with our lookup value in the first column. I'm going to make that absolute again, hitting F4. And then January is our one, two, third column. So we're going to put in a three and we want an exact match. And that will return the value for Charles in January. If we change our name, you can see that it updates automatically. Now you can use XLOOKUP as an alternative to VLOOKUP. So let's have a quick look at how that might work. Similar to VLOOKUP, the XLOOKUP function finds things within your table or array by row. And in its simplest form, how it works, we go equals XLOOKUP. We want to have our lookup value in the same way we do with our VLOOKUP. So that's our name here. I'm going to make that absolute. And the next is our lookup array. So this is the column we want to look at the value in. So we're just going to select this first column. There's no need to select the entire table with XLOOKUP. Make that absolute. And our return array is then the column in which we want to return a value from. So in this instance, we want to look up January. And that in its simplest format is how XLOOKUP works. So you'll see we're returning the same value as with our VLOOKUP. Now there are a number of other parameters within XLOOKUP. So the first of the optional parameters is what, you, what it's going to return if your value is not found. So at the moment, if I were to delete Bethany from this list, we'd get an error message within our return. So if we were to undo this and instead use this optional parameter and instead return error, if I were to then go and delete Bethany, you get the word in here rather than value. And this could be a numerical value or a text value as we've got it here. The next parameter is our match mode. So by default, it comes in as the exact match. If you type in minus one and it doesn't find the value, it will return the next smallest number. One will give you the next largest number. And number two is a wildcard match. And what that means if you were to select two here, and we weren't 100% sure how the name was spelt, we knew it started with BE. You type BE star, and it would still return your Bethany result. You can also use a question mark, which would replace a similar character. So if I were to type J question mark M, it would return the value for Jim. Now the last parameter in your X lookup is your search mode. So by default, it searches first to last. However, you can force it to search last to first within your list. So if something appears twice, it will return the first one from the bottom rather than the first one from the top. Or you can force it to search in either ascending or descending order. So you can see that there's some benefits to using XLOOKUP over VLOOKUP because it allows you to perform a slightly more intelligent search. Now, if we just take out the wildcard here and go back to searching for just Bethany, one of the other benefits of using XLOOKUP is it doesn't matter which column your lookup values are in. So it doesn't need to be the first within your table. So if we select here, we can move this across to our last column instead. That's our lookup column now. We're still searching here and the function will still work. It's also very easy to quickly update which column you're searching for without having to count what column it's in by just clicking into your formula and moving over which column you want to search in. XLOOKUP also works very well with tables, which we'll have a quick look at now. Now in this example, we have the exact same table as above, but we've got it formatted as a table. I'm going to quickly update my formulas so that it's searching within this table. 
So I want to, instead of searching within my original cells, which are hidden here, I'm going to update this so the VLOOKUP's looking up my table instead. And you can do that this with your XLOOKUP as well. So I'm going to look up my name range. So it's very, very quick to select this. So you can just click on your heading in your table and it will pick the entire first column. You can then pick what range you wanted to search in in the exact same way. Now it's very quickly to update this. If you wanted to search in a different column, you can just take away between the square brackets and it will give you a list of all the columns within your table. And it's very quick to just quickly select one, tab over, and you're searching in a different column. It can also make it quite clear what you're searching for because it's aligned with your header names. So there's a number of benefits to using XLOOKUP with tables. It's a little bit clearer than if we go into our VLOOKUP, which is just saying it's searching for column three in table one. And you can't really tell what column three was without counting. In a similar way, you can change what you're searching for very, very quickly. So that's just a quick overview of why XLOOKUP might be a slightly better option if you're searching for values within a table. Hope that you found this quick introduction to XLOOKUP useful. I'll leave a link to the file in the description below. Remember to like and subscribe. I'd love it if you left me a comment and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.